math facts, times tables. These play a central role in math class. And while we know that dyslexic learners benefit from multiple exposures and repeated practice, we need to make sure that that practice is intentional and meaningful. We don't want to spend a lot of time using flashcards and drill and killing on the same exact idea over and over again. Instead, giving that repetition in a multi-sensory way and really enforcing the concept of why 2 plus 2 equals 4 is going to allow a dyslexic learner to really internalize and effortlessly begin to pull upon those math facts. So in the same way that we target phonemes in phonics instruction, we want to target these math facts in our math instruction. Okay, everybody, let's read this number. 53. We use similar techniques as we do in phonics to build on that retrieval. The students will say the fact out loud. They'll build the fact. They'll trace it. They'll write it. And then they'll practice it at home. And they'll have the, that visual representation of that equation so they have meaning behind the digits. We want our students to have a few facts at a time that are related. Now maybe that means a fact family, like three plus two equals five, two plus three equals five, and then the subtraction part of it. Sometimes we might wanna give them problems like two plus three equals five, and then two plus five. How does what you know from the first problem help you solve the second problem? Five times five equals 25. Okay, now, I want you to write that equation in the sand, and I want you to say it while you're tracing it. Here we go. Five times five equals 25. And what do we know about practicing? If a student is learning five times five is 25, and then the next day they may get the fact five times seven. So how can you use what you know to figure out what you don't know? Seven groups of five. Since five groups of five is 25 and one group of five is five, we know the two groups of five will be 10. So we just have to add 10 to 25. So instead of our students just memorizing facts, they're deriving facts and building upon things that they know to figure out how to solve these problems. We're gonna practice writing and reading some equations. When we teach them the meaning behind the symbols, it helps them make meaning. Now we're gonna look at this symbol. Raise your hand if you can tell me what it's called. Wyatt. Plus sign. What does this mean? Reese. And. And. Think about what this number is. Close your eyes and show me on your fingers. Three. Three. We have another symbol. What is it called? Equal. What does equals mean? Henry. It's the same thing. I love it. Everyone say, is the same as? Is the same as. Beautiful. Seven, Seven and three, three is the same as as 10. Five groups of five is the same as 25. A lot of times you'll find that if you write three plus two equals five, and then you write five equals three plus two, our students will say, you wrote that wrong. Having them see equations written in different directions helps them understand the meaning behind them, but also helps them not get stuck if they're faced with a sheet or a page where a math problem is written differently than the way they've always seen it. What if I switch it around? It would be the same thing, but just a different way. Can you prove that to me? Yes, because seven plus three still equals 10. We want them to understand why things happen in math. And having these base facts is the beginning of all of that. It's the building blocks of all of math. 